good morning uh, thanks for making it so early in the morning uh, if you're wondering why this topic is so long as a title i uh, would want to tell you that uh, real time monitoring and um, incident response is what uh, we were all looking for and um, it has to be done very quick because uh, when the attack is happening you have to respond very quickly so we need to work on a smaller set of data uh, that is what i mean by security content metadata model and um, we need to have a efficient search methodology so that we can uh, quickly respond to incidents that are happening so i am uh, preeti subramanian uh, i am from bangalore india officially known as bengaluru uh, i work as a software architect at secpot technologies uh, i need a small favor uh, who has not visited india any time can you please raise your hand okay and who have visited any time you can raise okay i just wanted to understand if you can um, you know understand what i am speaking so just wanted to make sure there's some people who didn't raise so i'll try to speak slowly so that you can understand yeah so uh, this is the road map of what you would be expecting in another 25 minutes that i speak um what are the current issues that are there in the data sets uh, used by security products and um what are uh, the standards such as escap um uh, we'll try to quickly go through that and then uh, i would be talking about what is this metadata model and now that we have this metadata model how are we going to use it and also an example to show uh, real time monitoring and threat intelligence so there are two questions the first one is why there is a lack or commonality uh, between the data sets of different product, products that we use in our organization uh, there are different products that you must be using as patch management intrusion detection and all these products but there is no commonality between uh, the data sets that are currently existing and why don't these product talk together and work like a single system so um for example if 90% of the attacks make use of a vulnerability a known vulnerability or a misconfiguration um you know why not relate that and try to uh, when the attack happens why not fix that um, you know attack might as well fix the vulnerability that is there so that uh, no more attacks happen so how about you know making all this together and work like a single system so that's where escap came into being its security content automation protocol um it is a, a set of open standards that are there um, and it has flourished because of the community ideas that were there uh, and it's still maturing and um first i will go through the enumeration that are there i'll just quickly go through them there is something called cpe common platform enumeration where all the uh, products applications hardware operating system everything is uh, given a nomenclature a name uh, and uh, there is something called cve all the vulnerabilities that are there are enumerated and given an id and it has a lot of information and a cc is a configuration enumeration common configuration that you would find and cwe are the common weaknesses that are there um, they are categorized and every cve falls under some of the weakness that is existing then there are languages oval uh, open um, vulnerability assessment language that is a way to detect the vulnerabilities that are there in your system and there is xccdf um, this is actually benchmarking the security security posture uh, you must be having policies so that's what it uh, tries to check using um, oval uh, so there are checks that are done um, and anything that cannot be done automatically you have an interactive language called osil that uh, people um, like security administrators can actually answer uh, a questionnaire and um, like for example what is the serial number of your um, you know um, some device if they have to enter it manually then we can go ahead and check and uh, metrics we always measure so cvss uh, it's the common vulnerability severity score that is given uh, it is uh, depending on the access and what is the impact integrity impact confidential impact and those things 
CCSS is not very common, uh, it is the uh, uh, configuration severity score because every uh, organization has their own way to measure uh, you know configuration metrics. So, we cannot have a common um, uh, number that you can give to all organizations, it will depend from organization to organization. Yeah. And reporting, we have asset reporting format um, and we also have asset identification. Uh, these are commonly used for reporting purposes and integrity is a trust model that we have. Um, uh, because we have this content, we add some digital signature, make sure it is uh, integrity is uh, maintained. So, that is what SCAP is in a nutshell. And there is uh, threat intelligence, uh, there are uh, a lot of malware, hundred thousands of malware, but we cannot give an ID to it. Uh, because then it will become very huge. So, uh, we characterize it and classify it uh, as MAEC uh, and we, you know, uh, mark it under those um, categories. And cyber observables is um, all the events that are happening in your system uh, are marked as um, it is something like a registry that is created or a file that is deleted. All these events are, um, uh, you know, understood by cyber observables. And structured threat intelligence sticks, um, all the threat information is structured in this. Uh, they are all uh, expressed in the form of XML. Um, and the exchange for, um, you know, exchanging the threat intelligence, we have um, taxi. So, all this is XML, huge, huge XML. So, what we have? We have a sea of data. If you have worked in XML before, if it becomes bulky and becomes very difficult to actually, uh, you know, uh, parse it and then try to understand it. So, it becomes a very big data. So, that is why there is a um, need for a metadata that you retrieve from all this, um, these single uh, SCAP entities that we have. We take what we want. And uh, it should be uh, extendable in the sense that um, if some ch something changes in all these standards, a little bit of change that comes, we should be easily be able to incorporate it in our um, metadata. So, uh, we store uh, it as key value pair, um, you can, you know, uh, store it in a big data architecture, um, it will be very easy to store all this information. I will quickly go through this, I do not know if it is really visible, but um, it is ID description, I store certain information, ID description, the date if I want to um, have, um, you know, queries on date. So, I uh, have chosen to have date um, and there are properties where we have a key value. So, every CV has some properties, um, oval has some properties. So, we store it as a property key and a value for it. So, here is an example of uh, metadata of the CV. Uh, we have the ID description and uh, we have the created and modified date, ok. But we have an important thing called score uh, because it is very high here, it is 10.0. And we have um, access vector, impact vector, all this is calculated. Um, so, we store this data, it is publicly available. So, we store this data in a metadata format. So, when we store this data, we can easily search. So, uh, if I say I want to know the recent threats that are there in the, um, you know, current world right now. So, I just search for recent threats. So, any modification or creation that has happened recently, you will be able to know those CVs. So, when you click on one of them, it gives you the entire information, the tabular format that I shown two slides before. That will come here on the search interface and you can actually read about it. Um, there are also references to external uh, links so that you can go deeper and read about it. And different SCAP entities can be related. Um, so, for example, here we have a CVE. It is related to some of the products that is Adobe Flash Player here. And uh, how to check if this is existing, we have oval checks uh, that you can actually click and you can execute that and try to see if you have those CVEs. And it also, um, every CV has a CW or weakness enumeration that it is associated with. So, that also you um, can go ahead and, you know, uh, research on. 
So how do we use this metadata? I have stored all this information, uh, so what? I have stored all this information and what will I do with this? So I have a sea of data as I told, oval, XCCDF, CV, all this information. I take the relevant information, CV also has uh, how to exploit and how to fix, all those information are also there, but if I'm not really uh, wanting to search on that, so I can like exclude those things and have a sea of data here and the SCAP entities, I can just put it in the metadata, whatever I need. Then there is something called uh, system info that we, um, there are multiple um, machines that are there in your organization. You can get all the information of those uh, system and you can, these are the actual facts that are there and uh, C of data is what is actually you can check on. So you can feed that to the metadata and this metadata when it goes to the correlation engine, it can actually, um, you know, respond quickly because it knows that there is some file that is there and uh, you know that file is malicious. So you can actually go ahead and remove it or if you have a product which is vulnerable, you can go ahead and remediate that. So the flow of incident response would be, you collect all the data, all the events that are happening, the events that you are interested in, like you have ports, processes, files, registries that you want to read. And then not all events are, you know, important. Some just happen. Uh, there are like millions of them that happens. So um, the incident identification, any suspicious activity that happens, you feel that it is suspicious because the administrator has written some rules or uh, you know that this is not, um, you know, kind of what we would expect, like some uh, strange EXE starts running and you identify it as suspicious. So you uh, feed it to the analytics and you uh, correlation engine and you try to see that this product, okay, it is vulnerable. So what is the remediation for this? So you go ahead and fix and you can prevent attacks that are happening in your system. So this is an example um, of real-time threat monitoring. So for example, uh, there is some EXE that ran. Uh, here I've named it as injadbe.exe. It can be any name you um, think of it. And then it runs with a PID. Okay, uh, and we identify it's of an Adobe product, for example, just taking an example. So when this runs and you know that this PID of, is of an Adobe product, you try to um, send this information, try to understand that this product is vulnerable because its version, vendor has released a patch and we might not have patched our systems. So um, we have identified there is a vulnerability and uh, Okay, we can delete that file, we can delete whatever the malware has done, but that is not going to stop another attack from happening. So the best thing would be to also fix the vulnerability that is there so that uh, other attacks do not happen. So uh, we fix the vulnerability as well. So there is something called CRE, which is a common rem uh, remediation enumeration. That is um, uh, not very common, but we have um, remediation for all the vulnerabilities right now uh, that uh, we are searching, our product is uh, searching for vulnerabilities. So we also check the remediation if uh, it is not applied, we apply. So a remediation is identified, so you apply that patch and fix your machine. Okay, so there's a demo that I can show. Okay, um, this is our repository where we can search um, uh, whatever you would be interested in. So for example, this is something called NERC uh, compliance that I have searched. It gives me a list of XCCDF that you can, you know, go ahead and download and, um, you know, check if your organization is compliant. So this is one of the examples. I just did this to save time. So this is, um, I'm interested in all those Adobe CVEs whose severity score is more than 8 because I really want to go ahead and fix them as quickly as possible. So you can search for it and you can see if any of your machines have it. 
CVs which have access complexity high. So that also you can uh, go ahead and you know search. I'm trying to search Adobe Flash Player um, vulnerabilities that are there. For example, I click on one of the vulnerability that is there. Um, I know how to check it because I have uh, Oval, uh, which can go ahead and check if you have that vulnerability. That is on the right hand side uh, bottom. So it tells me all those eight um, signatures that I can check. We call it definitions. And also, uh, what is the remediation? So since it is affecting Windows and Linux, so um, I will go ahead and check what is the remediation that is required for this. So. So it says that it um, has the product and the platform and this is the patch that has to be applied. And the size of the patch, you can prioritize it if it is a very big uh, patch that you have to apply. You can choose it to do it, you know, a later point of time when, you know, probably your organization is free, you know, not in the working hours or something like that. So. So this is there and if you apply this patch, it uh, solves 408 vulnerabilities, which is not a joke. So it fixes all those vulnerabilities. This is the heart bleed, which became very famous. Uh, because of the media, so yeah, heart bleed. Uh, it is an open SSL. Uh, so you can see this is for the product open SSL, and um, you can check. You can apply, uh, you know, these definitions. If you have an interpreter or um, you're running some um, oval interpreter, you can run it, and you can see if it is vulnerable. And so, if it is vulnerable. Um, Many products only tell you that they are vulnerable, but they do not tell you how to fix it. So here is the information how to fix it. So you can choose uh, whatever um, is relevant for you and uh, you know, fix those. So if you search for some famous uh, vulnerabilities that are there, ghost vulnerability or um, freak vulnerability, freak. So you can go ahead and, you know, um, see all those information and try to fix it. So this is that uh, it's all working on the metadata. It's uh, very small, so uh, we are able to search quick. And um, all this I'm showing as a part of the demo, but this all can be automated. And you can actually uh, go ahead and get the fix for it. And you need not go through like manually searching. You can uh, write beautiful programs to just you know go and fix the problem. And um, this is uh, from the host. Uh, what information has come. So uh, as an administrator, you can see that information, uh, vulnerability information, uh, what compliance issues you have, and what all products you have installed, and what sort of operating system you're running. All those information can also be fed. This is the system info part that I was talking about in the earlier uh, thing. So these are the actual facts that are there, and there are the information. So you can relate both of them. So if there is any attack that is happening right now, you will know there is something running in your organization. So you can um, identify it immediately. You can try to fix it so that uh, it comes to near zero. Um, so I did it pretty quickly. So uh, I'm open to questions if you have any.
yeah there is an agent uh, but uh, this is only about the metadata so I didn't show the agent how it is running so imagine that you have some uh, mechanism to get the system information and you can give it to the administrator those are the actual facts that are happening in your organization you can correlate that to all the uh, other data that is there uh, right now I have shown SCAP but there are other standards so you can um, relate them yes 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 Um, we have a free product that anybody can use. Um, it's called Saner that I had um, uh, given a demo in the arsenal yesterday. So you can use this. It will fix uh, for personal use. You can just fix the vulnerabilities that are there. Uh, there is definitely a missing piece of anti-malware. It is complementary to that because nobody can stop you from clicking anything on the site. And so when that happens, uh, we need to identify that it's a you know a wrong. Uh, file or something getting downloaded so we need to fix it so that can be related with this metadata so the threat uh, intelligence and the vulnerability intelligence all put together can fix the yes yes we have thought about it and uh, we are coming with a product in the end of the year uh, so this will fix that missing piece where we can maybe uh, you know integrate it with virus total and to get the information for threat intelligence because the information is there already so we need not create it so yeah we can use that and integrate this how up to date is the database how uh, it happens every day. So uh, for vulnerabilities, uh, we uh, what do we do is we take it from the publicly available uh, site that is there. So we don't actually research on the vulnerabilities. But if there is something that we find, we surely give a contribution. But we take it from something called National Vulnerability Database, NVD. Uh, we take it from there. But the oval checks that we have to do to find out the vulnerability, that we write um, as a research team. And uh, we do it thrice a week, release thrice a week. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, generally, right now we are running every uh, 24 hours. So we can do that. Yeah. Any other question? Um, we are using, um, okay, if you have to ex exchange the information, this metadata information across the repositories, we give it in the form of JSON or XML that you can, you know, take it from us and you can probably integrate to your, um, um, you know, repository if you have, or else you can directly read it from us. So we have some sort of a RESTful APIs that we have, um, you can just download that content from uh, our repository. Um, uh, some of the content like uh, checks and XCCDF and all this are um, only given to paid users but you can uh, openly check all the metadata. Metadata is totally free. You can just take it from our uh, scaprepo.com and you can read it. Yes, yes, we are using MongoDB. MongoDB, uh, Tengen, yeah. Uh, right now we have not faced it yet, um, the scalability issues, but definitely it is. So um, uh, the thing is uh, we are having powerful servers right now, so uh, that way we don't see a problem. And to find out information we run agents, so they all happen parallelly. So that also we are not bothered much about. It's only about storing this information and trying to relate it which um, all depends also on the rules that are written by the administrator because um, every administrator will have their own set of rules that they want to um, evaluate it on and we are trying to um, you know understand the scenario right now 
uh, because we don't have the threat intelligence yet. So we will see how we are going to do this. Okay, so um, the data is definitely going to grow uh, because there are a lot of vulnerabilities that are going to be done. Uh, so um, we need to store all that information because we cannot say that um, any CV which is there older than 2007, we will remove it because those actually those are getting used, you know, very old vulnerabilities are getting um, exploited which are not fixed because they are just ignored. So we are going to store all that information. We are not going to uh, do that. But right now, uh, yeah, it's uh, GBs of data. Right now it is like that. And maybe move to TBs, but uh, not sure. Maybe, yeah. But we will store all the information because it's necessary. Uh, right now, no. Uh, we do not have an agentless solution because we feel that um, the way an agent actually goes and tests the machine, uh, it's like more uh, appropriate, like it can go deeper and try to, because it runs locally, so it can do more checks. So uh, that's how we want to go about it, okay, with the agent. So uh, any more questions? Uh, you can actually, uh, if you have any questions, you can even write to me. I'll be happy to respond. So if you have any questions of how to use this metadata or if you have some arguments like why, why at all we need such a big data. So. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot.